Hey everyone, welcome to another Anime Kingdom review. See what I thought below? Yes, this is on episode 6 of Steins Gate Zero and honestly holy crap that ending i mean just the whole entire episode honestly had me at the edge of my seat the entire time the, this episode literally was just like messing with my mind there were so many things that happened in this episode that i was thinking holy crap what about this what about that so many different possibilities of something happening so many things that could lead to this little things that when you listen in and when you're actually watching it's just like it's crazy and they try to like throw you off a little with certain parts like them you know the normal teasing of maho or like how you have pretty much the teasing of ruka saying you know is ruka really a guy kind of thing stuff like that that just makes you laugh and kind of throw you off for a moment and even towards the end they make you kind of think everything's all good everything's you know all fine and all right and everything and, you know, we have Okabe over here looking like he's finally ready to move forward. Even with everyone finding out about Amadeus, even with the connection of Kagari and, you know, Kirisu looking so much alike, he's ready to move forward. But guess what? It's not going to be like that. Of course, this is Steins Gate. Something is going to happen. And everything in this episode from the very beginning shows, like, it, it, it does a really good job at leading you and building up to that point the finale the ending of this episode the cliffhanger everything led to that point and just makes you like still after after it happens you're still wondering like holy shit how did it come to this you know from the very beginning of you know pretty much making it so last week's episode there's a huge thing that happened with you know kagari showing up at the doorstep and all of a sudden mayuri coming in and she faints and you think holy crap the beginning of this episode is going to be crazy but actually it ends up being more of just making you really have to think on what's truly going on she says yes she lost her memory but is that really true because obviously we see with suzaha she doesn't really buy everything that is going on and it makes sense because of you know what we've seen from her flashback obviously kagari the last time they've seen each other it ended in a, a gunshot, pretty much, is what happened. And we don't know the specifics. That's one of the crazy things with this part, too, is that we don't fully know what is going on there because it just cuts off right there. Did Suza, you know, Suzuha get shot? Was she able to dodge and stop Kagari? How did they separate and everything? And, you know, it just seems so, like, too much of a coincidence that Kagari had somehow ended up showing up at this point in time with amnesia, you know, with Ruka and everything. It just seems so... Like, too much of a coincidence. Like, maybe she is trying to finish the job because she found out where Suzuha is and found out what she's trying to do once again. And obviously, she doesn't want them to change the past and everything. Um, and yes, it is a possibility that it is, like, maybe a kind of blowing things out of proportion. And, you know, she really does have amnesia and it's not a coincidence. But there's still the whole thing of someone is chasing her. Who is this person chasing her and why are they chasing her? That's another huge thing, honestly, that has you thinking throughout the episode of the different possibilities of who could be the person that, you know, sent this raid that we see at the end of the episode. The first obvious, you know, suspect is Moeka because honestly, I was not expecting Okabe to just straight up tell her, yeah, we found her because I don't know. I, I would think that he would still be kind of paranoid on that point. But it just, it, it not only does it make you kind of let your guard down, because it's, you're feeling the same thing that Okabe is feeling throughout this episode, honestly. And that's one of the things I like about Steins Gate, is that I can, I really feel like I'm in his shoes a lot of the time of what's going on. Um, they do a really good job at kind of directing the scenes for that certain case and everything. And, you know, there's there, there may be a chance that it, because it's so obvious that it's not really her, but just telling her and then her at the end finding out that, yes, they did find her. And obviously someone is, you know, looking for her. And it kind of the ending kind of shown flashbacks kind of thing of the original raid that we had seen in, you know, Ste the original Steins Gate. It just kind of makes it an obvious. Maybe it, it's too obvious that that cannot be it. But you never know. We may be overthinking. You're thinking that can't be happening again. Right. But it honestly may be her. We may see in the next episode that she ends up popping up in her outfit again. In that outfit again. And she actually is here um, for some reason to get this time Kagari instead, you know? So, there's that. Who else could be, you know, um, what's it called? Being the one that's orchestrating all this. Someone that you may not even have thought of. 
But what I saw was the possibility maybe it was Judy. Judy, once again, another coincidence, appears out of nowhere just now when they're trying to find Kagari and everything. She wasn't with them before, the professor and uh, Maho. She just came only recently. She says, of course, it's for a certain thing. But it just seems a little bit too much of a coincidence, especially when they have that one scene and they're leaving and Kagari, of course, is over here walking on by. She turns around and you just see this look in her eye. Why does she have that look? It could be maybe she notices that she looks just like, you know, Kirisu and maybe that's just it. But it's honestly also another possibility that she has been looking for Kagari this whole time. And that's why she, you know, ended up in the country at this certain time. So there's like so many different possibilities, honestly, in this, just in this episode period that have you thinking, who is the person orchestrating all of this? What is really going on? What is the truth and everything? And honestly, it's just mind blowing all the craziness that really did happen in this episode that has you literally just like, wondering and just at the edge of your seat throughout the whole episode having your guard go up and down up and down up and down so many times the numerous kind of you know okabe having flashbacks and illusions of seeing him and kirisu is one of the main things that had developed in this episode as well from him kind of obviously still having you know the whole thing with him and you know kagari she looks so much like kirisu his problem with him and amadis as well because obviously you know his connection to kirisu but he finally starts to begin to move on and when that happens yeah this happens and even more crazy flashbacks you know ptsd kind of stuff happened at the very end and just everything leads to the ending in such a perfect way that just it, it honestly had me just like holy pretty much just like the professor and his holy cow we should have you know got here earlier i swear the professor's english always just cracks me up especially when he was looking for the girls like that's another part that it kind of let your guard down because of the comedic moment um, of him saying like where's the shaman girls kind of thing you know and then during that moment that's when judy has that little like look and you're like holy crap you might just pass over it because you're kind of just laughing at what the professor had said and everything it's it's honestly just that crazy that there's so many things that subtle things yet things you if you really look you can actually see and just like holy crap okay so everything led to this crazy ass ending what is the true thing what is really happening and of course the ending we could talk about the ending for days honestly on what's going to be happening in the next episode that's what makes this cliffhanger so good because of how everything built up to that cliffhanger that makes you wonder how is how did everything happen why did this happen and everything and then of course the very end is also when you're thinking how are they going to get out of this situation it's not like he can they, they have a working time machine at the moment or anything like that so how are they going to stop these guys from shooting? Obviously, maybe they won't shoot. That's definitely a possibility because they're just there for a cockety. But the whole point of the guy just aiming his gun and ending with the sight of the gun barrel aimed towards them, it just gets you to think like, it, it really makes you think, is someone going to die? Or is there somehow a way they're going to go back in time or something crazy like that? There's just so many different possibilities that I really actually for once enjoyed having a cliffhanger. Because it does such a good job at making you think on what's going to be happening in the next episode. And making you want that next week's episode to happen already. And that's, that's definitely how I feel right now. I want to know what's going to happen. I want next week's episode so badly right now that it's just like... It, it's in a good way that this, I'm happy that they had a cliffhanger. Like, of course, I rather just know what's going to happen. But it just when that, you know, when it happens, it's just going to just escalate because of all that tension throughout the week of waiting. It's just going to be that much better, in my opinion, though. It could just crash and burn, you know, everything with hype and you're expecting something to be really good and it ends up not being as good. Then, of course, you kind of, you know, it kind of that kind of sucks and everything. But I, I honestly think next week's episode is going to be pretty damn crazy since this one is more of a build up. Next week, next week's episode is probably going to be that super explosive and big one that honestly I cannot wait to see. But yeah, that's that's honestly really all I got to say, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this Anime Kingdom review. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If there's anything I missed and you want to talk about, comment below as well. And if you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe for more content. As always, guys, I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Anime Watchers only, how did you feel about this episode? Did you enjoy it? Do you have as, like a, a huge amount of questions? You know, 
feel free to comment below your theories your you know what you think is going to happen feel free to comment below whatever you guys want it's always awesome to hear your guys opinions and theories and stuff as well because you've heard mine i want to hear yours and source material people who've played the game it, was this episode really well done? I mean, for me, it felt, as I watch it only, it was a pretty damn awesome episode. And I've been seeing that people have been saying certain things have been, you know, done better in comparison to the game. So how was this? Was it done right? Obviously, no spoilers. If you do want to put spoilers, like I always say, do the whole skip four lines thing. So if someone clicks read more, that's their choice. I don't want to spoil, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other anime watchers only don't want to be spoiled either. So, yeah, just put whatever you want to comment, you know, you want to comment down your opinions and thoughts, and... Yeah, that's all I got to say, guys. Hope you enjoyed this Anime Kingdom review. And I honestly cannot wait to see you guys next week when we watch next week's episode. Because it's probably going to be pretty damn crazy. So, yeah. That's all I got to say, guys. So, till next time, see ya.